We now want to find out how to find an orthogonal representation, which is the second step, the shape step of the topology shape matrix. The idea is that we want to describe the drawing combinatorically. So without getting the drawing, we only want to describe how the shape of it looks like. So let's say we have some graph and we have the set F of faces and F0 is the outer face. It's a plane graph, so we also have a planar embedding. We want to have a look at a single edge E and the face that lies to the right of it. For this face, we will look at the clockwise order. Now, what information do we have to store for this edge E so that we can construct a drawing of it? We want to store two things. So the edge description of E with regards to this face is a triple of the edge and two things delta and alpha. The delta tells us the shape of the edge E. So it tells us how many right bands and how many left bands in which order do we have. We store that as a sequence of zeros which are right bands and ones that are left bands. So in this face we walk in clockwise order, that means we have to go this way. We first have a left band, so a 1, then a right band, so a 0, and another right band, so another 0. That means our delta is a 1, 0, 0. And then we also want to store what is the angle from the edge E to the next edge here, to the edge E prime, so that we know when we walk along the face, do we have a band here or here, or don't we have a band at all? So in this case, the angle is pi, so we store another pi here. And that way we can find a description of every edge with regard to every face that it lies on. And we know an edge lies at exactly two faces. For the face, we can also store the description by just looking at the clockwise ordered sequence of all the edge descriptions. So we get a representation for every face. And now what we want is the whole orthogonal representation, that is just the set of all the face representations of the graph. Let's have a look at an example. We have one graph here with five vertices and with six edges. On the outer face we look at the counterclockwise order and on the interior faces at the clockwise order. I will now show you this is some orthogonal representation. For phase 0 we have these five edges and it tells us the bands, it tells us exactly what is the angle between the vertices and now we will try to realize this. So we want to find a combinatorial drawing of this. So we start with the outer face. In our list the first edge is the edge E1 which is this one here and its shape is with two left bands. So it looks like this. Remember that here we go counterclockwise, so we walk this way, left band, left band. Then we have an angle of pi over 2 to the next edge E5. That means we have pi over 2 here and E5 has to go this way around. We have three left bands, so we go 1, 1, 1 and we end up here. Then we have a 3 pi over 2 angle, that means we have to go here to the left, and we draw edge E4 without any bends. Then we have a pi angle, so it still goes to the left, and we draw edge E3 without any bends. And again, we have a pi angle, we draw edge E2 without any bends, and then here we have a pi over 2 angle that works out, and we've drawn the outer face. Let's move on to phase 1. With phase 1 we also start with edge E1. And if we look here it's already correct. We go up and then we have two right bands, the two zeros. We continue with E2 and here we have a 3 pi over 2 angle. That's what the representation tells us, it works out. E2 is drawn without any bend. And then we continue with a pi over 2 angle so we go downwards here to edge E6. E6 has two right bands and that closes this face. 
And the same we can do with S2. Here we already have drawn all the edges, so we just have to check if everything we've drawn works out with the representation here. So we start with E5, we have three zeros, that works out. Then we have pi over two. Then we go to E6 with two ones, that works out here. We have pi over two, E3 without a bend, pi, E4 without a bend, pi over two, and everything works out. So this representation is valid. But we can also clearly see that it's very easy to get a representation that's not valid. For example, at this point here, we could just choose a pi, and then already we're done here, because we want to have a 3 pi over 2 and a pi angle that is not possible. Also, we've already drawn the edge E6. We have two zero bands here, that means that if we look at it from the other side, it must have two ones. So we have a bunch of properties that an orthogonal representation must have, such that we can get a drawing. And even then, the drawing is not unique. For example, we can just move this edge down, move this vertex up, and then we get two different drawings of the same representation. But these numbers, they don't change at all. So now we want to figure out what are the properties that our orthogonal representation must have, such that it is valid, such that it is correct. And there are four of those. The first one just says, if we look at the representation of every face, then this must work out with the embedding that we have. So for every face, the order of the edges must be exactly the order that we get from the embedding. Otherwise, this cannot be valid. Now we have a condition for every edge, for every face, and for every vertex. Let's start with the edges. So let's have a look at the edge E6 here. This is shared by two faces, F and G. In this example, it's F1 and F2. And we have our own description of this edge for these two faces. Now we want to figure out, is there any dependency between these numbers and these numbers? What do you think? If we look at it here, if we have a right band on this side, then of course on the other side we must have a left band. And if we have a left band here, then on the other side we must have a right band. So if we look at the description from here to here, and we turn it around, so we go backwards, then we get the inverted description of the other side. Now we want to go to the faces. For that it's a bit more complicated, and we first want to define a number. So we want to have a look at every edge and count how many right crossings and how many left crossings do we have. And then for the description of an edge, we calculate this number here. We will see in a second what this number means. Now if we sum up this number for the description of every edge around a face, then the sum is a 4 if our face is interior and minus 4 if it's the outer face. Let's have a look at face F2 and then we will see what this number tells us. We start with edge E3. How many zeros do we have? Zero. How many ones do we have? Zero. And the alpha value here is pi. We multiply it with pi over 2, so we get a 2 here and a 2 here, and it gives us a zero. Let's go to the edge E4. Again, we have no zeros, no ones. We have pi over 2 here, so we have 2 minus 1, and that's a 1. We go to the edge e5, we have 3 zeros, we have no 1, and we have pi over 2 here. So this is 3 plus 2 minus 1 is a 4. And now we can see, if we walk from here to here, then it's straight, so we have a 0. When we walk from here to here, then we have one right band. So we have one here. If we walk from here to here, then we have three right bands from the zeros and one right band from this. So we do four right bands. Means we put a four here. And if we look at edge E6, we have no zeros, but we have two ones. 
and then we do pi over 2 in the end, so we have minus 2 plus 2 minus 1, we have a minus 1. Here we have one right band, but two left bands. So we put a minus 1 here, because these two cancel out, this gives us one left band. And now, what does the sum of this tell us? Well, we have an orthogonal polygon here. An orthogonal polygon, all our bands are the eval right bands, so 90 degree, or left bands, 270 degree. If we look at a square, then we have exactly four right bands. And for every left band that we add, we must again have another right band here. Here we have one, two, three, four, five right bands and one left. So as long as we're in such a polygon, the number of right bands minus the number of left bands must always be 4. And that's exactly what these numbers tell us. So we count the number of right bands minus the number of left bands, and this has to be a 4. And on the outer face it's just the opposite, since we look at it from the other side, that means we must have a minus 4 here. The fourth restriction is again very easy, this for every vertex. If we look at this vertex here, we have a bunch of blue angles, and the sum of these of course must be 2 pi, we must have exactly 380 degrees. And these are exactly the conditions that we have to check to find out if an orthogonal representation is valid.